Welcome to version two of In the Club. It is everything you want to know about GCU club sports, but we're afraid to ask. And we thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Today, we're going to talk about everything that rugby has to offer. And the man who has literally shaped and molded the GCU men's and women's rugby programs into what they are now joins us now. He is a man who has a storied resume. He's got over 20 years of coaching experience on the high school, the college, and the pro level, including four years at Northeastern University. And then, of course, his really big pinnacle, he took the Notre Dame program and really built it from the ground up and reshaped it. He was there for eight years. He actually started the women's rugby program for the Fighting Irish in 2009. And then he even went to the pro level and his lone year in Denver, he won the entire pro league title. Our viewers and listeners may be looking at that storied resume and you automatically usually shake your head when I, when I present yes, that, right? I absolutely do. Jim, uh, thank you uh, for having me on. It's a great pleasure. Um, <clears throat> love being here at, at GCU and, and love working with Lindsay with the women's program. But um, as I tell some people, a resume is a piece of paper and it's, it's the fun part for me was getting down here and getting my hands dirty and, and just realizing what, a, what an amazing environment and what, what a great potential this had here for, for moving up from being a, a, a fairly successful uh, rugby program to really challenging at the top. And uh, that, that was not only my goal. I, I met with the players, Jim, uh, before I, I accepted the position and wanted to know where the players wanted to go. And we were able to align our goals uh, pretty quickly in me realizing the resources we had here through uh, everything that goes on at club sports, through our medical team, uh, to the facilities, <clears throat> and then just the, the general feeling of, of, of on campus that they wanted the rugby program to do well. So uh, couldn't have picked a better spot. Hadn't even told my wife when I when I realized I, I better give her a call and say, hey, sweetheart, do you feel like moving from Denver to to Phoenix? And <laughs> she's loving it now here, too. I think a lot of people would look at Notre Dame and look at GCU and not necessarily draw a lot of parallels. But the reasons that you came to Notre Dame and the reasons you came to GCU are pretty similar, aren't they? It's very similar. Um the the program at Notre Dame had been had, had actually been kicked off campus for for uh 15 years. And so when, when that one, that was a rebuild, um, they had, they had a, a field with a, a tree. Um, when I say it was like, there was a root that was coming out into the field. I mean, I don't know how guys were, weren't <laughs> killed. Um, but that, that was a re that was a rebuild. Uh, the, the, there was great support from the alumni. Um, but not until close to the end was there really support from the university. And so um, when my time was done there, I, I didn't have another job lined up. I, I just, it was time to, to, to move on. And I had really just thought about doing some coach development for myself, personal development for, I don't know, six months, a year and uh, do some travel. And, and then I was approached to, to get in, involved with the pros. Um, but this opportunity down here, not that this program needed to be rebuilt, um, but it needed, it needed a little, a little in, impetus uh, impetus and and so it it just was uh it, it, it you know it's only six years old that's uh, into its seventh year next year it, it started by adam and ryan and uh they built a, a a great foundation here uh but even those guys would say there, there's a lot more potential in this program at gcu uh than has been realized and that's my job that's what it, why i'm here is to find the full potential of our kids and it's funny, they, they started their, their summer um, strength and conditioning program this past uh, Monday. They're into their fourth day of it today. And um, we, we have uh, over 99% participation in it right now. And we have our leadership group, or I have group texts going on. Um, and and so, so that to me, after this massive recruiting class shows, one, people wanted to come here. Two, the people that are here want this to get better quickly. And, and three, they're all willing to, 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 you know, row the boat, pull the rope, whatever all those great sayings are. It really doesn't matter what the sayings are. It's just get your hands dirty and let's get going on the job. But when you say get your hands dirty, 
I think for a lot of rugby fans, they automatically look at it as, well, you're just supposed to put the jersey on, grab the ball, and go hit somebody. And for you, that is that was so far down the line of your list of priorities when you got here in September. Talk about what your process was. Process is simple. It's been the same for all of them. Is is You build culture first. You don't go and start looking at how you're going to beat, for example, locally here, Arizona or ASU. And then what's next? You know, Cal, St. Mary's, Lindenwood, Life. You'd go and, and you built upon what was here first. So there, there was some good structure here. And for me, then it's culture. Culture number one, build the culture of a program and find out what, what the players want, how they want to represent themselves through the rugby program at GCU. That's then becomes our identity. And we move on from there. You never have to look at results after that. All you have to do then is start, are we living those, that culture? Are we living it on a daily basis? Are we living, are we, are we true to what we're saying when we put it up on a whiteboard or put it on a flyer or put it in a PowerPoint presentation? Do we actually live it? Do we live every part of it? And when we actually have a group of people that, that do that and have the same aim and same goal and then live it every day, every minute of every day, in everything they do. So their timekeeping is important. That means their timekeeping, keeping up with their studies, um, making sure they're being honorable, um, uh, having empathy. Um, all that is on a daily basis. If they live that every day, then we, the easy part is for me to go out on the, on the field with, with the coaches and put a plan together. And we, we do our session. The session goes into, leads into another session. We play a game. We look at video and we go again. The hard part is, is, is building something that's foundational uh, because without that, the whole thing falls down. One of the things that always is, is, so, is, is so important to you, and I've learned the importance of it, even all the way down to the national anthem being played before games. I want you to talk about that briefly, if you could. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to bring that up. Listen, I'm, <laughs> Jim, I'm making notes here about how much we can get done during – uh, this time. So this to me is not downtime. This actually is, we're, I'm getting more done with my players currently than I would under normal circumstances. And so we're, we're putting policies together and actually they do include the national anthem. But um, when a conversion is being taken, because it usually takes 90 seconds, whether it's us taking a conversion after scoring a try or a try being con uh, converted on us and, and the lads are down and whatever. And we're putting policies in place. Are, these are valuable times for us to go back and revisit what is, what is important to us. The national anthem is an important part of that to me because it's attention to detail. Uh, previously, you know, the guys, they, they wrap their hand around and then they don't know the policies um, in how to stand for their national anthem. But nobody has taken time to explain that to them. And so there, there are two ways to stand. I have to stand a, per, a particular way as I'm not a U.S. citizen. I have to stand at military ease with my hands interlaced behind my back. Um, but but the, the Americans on our team, it's all Americans, obviously. Well, this year we had one Englishman. But our, 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 our citizens have to stand a certain way. And, and obviously that then allows them to know what to do so they don't fidget during the national anthem. And they're able to have clarity in what they're doing and have such pride in saying, hey, young men my age are, are, are in a war somewhere or are doing something more different. I get to play a game of rugby in the stadium, in GCU, to represent my family, myself, my, my university, and, and, and this is how I'm going to do it today. And, and then sing proudly our national anthem, which is, this is the best country in the world, and finish that national anthem and just know right away what we're doing so that every second is leading up to the national anthem, play the national anthem, deep breath, onto the game of rugby. There are so many topics that you and I could cover, and I and we are definitely going to have you back on the podcast probably multiple times, Sean. But if you are interested in learning more, not only about Sean's men's rugby program, but also Lindsay Mahoney's women's rugby program, you see the ways to get involved and to contact people. They are on your screen. And again, we're going to have Sean O'Leary back. Sean, thanks so much for taking the time. We appreciate you being a part of it. So until we talk to you next time, I'm Jim Howell. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Jim.